Hey guys, in this video, the brilliant Mr. B is going to be taking you through working out angles in triangles, looking at some sort of exam questions that can come up and showing you exactly what sort of things the examiners are going to be looking for in an answer. Now there are 15 different examples here, easy ones, medium ones, and then some hard ones towards the end. If you look at the pinned comment, that will tell you where you can jump to. And you can jump around in this video as you want to. You don't just have to sit there and do it all in one go. You can stop it, pause it, go backwards, go forwards, however you feel comfortable. And then if you really, really want to practice this skill, there are thousands of questions just waiting for you over on my website. We're going to have a look at angles in triangles. Now, the first thing you need to know is that any triangle, no matter if it's a right angle triangle, an isosceles triangle, or an equilateral triangle, or even a scaling triangle, the angles in a triangle always add up to 180 degrees. So the three angles on the inside, as the inside angles, all three of them, and it will always be three, will add up to 180 degrees. So that's the first thing we need to know. The second thing we need to know is various bits of notation you might see. So the first thing you might see is a square shape on the corner of an angle, and this means that it, it is a 90 degree angle. We use a square shape to show this because it's the same angle you find in the corners of squares. The third thing you might see is you might see angles that have got two arcs on them. Now, what this means is that those angles are equal, so we know the same size. I'll see this in isosceles triangles, which have two angles the same size. You'll see it in equilateral triangles, where all three angles are the same size. Alternatively, the double arc, you might see a triple arc, which means it's a second set of angles at the same size. Or rather than arcs, you might see dashes, where one dash means the same size, and then two dashes would mean that's a second set that are the same size to each other. Now, we're going to be looking for the missing angle in each triangle. So for question one, we can see we've got a pair of double arcs. Now, on one side, it's represented by 70 degrees. So that means the double arc on the other side must also be 70 degrees. That's what that symbol means, they're the same size. So what we can do is we'll write that the angle that we're looking for is equal to 70 degrees. And that's it, that's our answer. There's no maths here. It's just recognizing mathematical notation and mathematical symbols. Moving on to question two. Now, again, we've got the same thing happening where we have a different angle this time where it has a double arc. Now, one of them says it's 30 degrees. So the other one with a double arc must also be 30 degrees. So we can write that the angle is equal to 30 degrees degrees. Now, moving on to question three, we don't have any notation on the triangle to kind of tell us that any of the angles are the same size, so we have to work it out a different way. And what we're going to do, we'll use two steps, and it's the same for any kind of finding missing angles in objects. First step is to add up the angles you've been given. So we've been given 50 degrees, and we've been given 70 degrees, and we're going to add those angles together. So we'll set it up like a column addition, zero plus zero. 5 plus 7, which will give us 12, so 120 degrees. So we've got 120 degrees on our diagram. Now we know that triangles add up to 180 degrees. So if we've only got 120 degrees, then we've got some angles missing. So if we subtract what we've got so far from what we know the total is, whatever's left over is going to be the answer. So do 0 take away 0. 8 take away 2, and 1 take away 1, which is 0, and that gives us 60. So the angle is equal to 60 degrees. So let's try that method again with question 4. So step 1 is going to be add together the angles you're given. So we've been given 40 degrees, we've been given 30 degrees, so add those together, and that is going to give us 0 plus 0, 4 plus 3 is going to give us 70 degrees. Now we know that triangles add up to 180 degrees, so if we take away the 70 degrees we've got already, whatever's left over is going to be our angle. So 0 take away 0, 8 take away 7, 
and one take away nothing. So our angle is going to be 110 degrees. Doing that again for question five, add together the angles we've been given. So we've been given 50 degrees and we've been given 90 degrees. And you'll notice that little square shape on the 90. So that's the kind of notation you'll see for a right angle. And you won't always have the 90 written next to it. So you're going to have to start remembering that that's 90 degrees without the number next to it. Over the same method, we're going to add these together and see what we've got so far. So 0 plus 0 and 5 plus 9 is 14. So 140 degrees. We know that triangles add up to 180 degrees. So if we take away 140 we've got so far. So 0 take away 0, 8 take away 4 and one take away one, which is zero, we know that our angle is equal to 40 degrees. Moving on to the medium questions, it's going to be the same method, we've just got slightly more complicated numbers now. So question one, step one is always going to be add together the numbers you're given. So we're given 38, we've been given 78, and we're going to do a column addition. 8 plus 8, 3 plus 7, plus the one we carried. So it should give you 116. Then we know that triangles add up to 180 degrees. So if we take away the 116 we've got so far, that should leave us with our missing angle. Now we're going to have to borrow one here. So we have to borrow from the 8, which will go down to a 7. So then that will read 10 take away 6. 7 take away 1 and 1 take away 1 which is 0. So our angle is equal to 64 degrees. Moving on to question 2, again same method, add up the two angles we've been given. We've been given 87 degrees and 41 degrees. So add together the angles you've been given as clues. So 7 plus 1 and 8 plus 4. That gives us 128 degrees. Again, we know that triangles add up to 180 degrees. So we're going to take away the 128 degrees we've got so far. Whatever is left over is going to be our answer. We're going to have to borrow one from the 8. And because 180 ends in a 0, you very often have to borrow right at the start. So 10 take away 8, 7 take away 2, and one take away one, which is zero, so I'm not going to write anything. So our angle is equal to 52 degrees. Same method for question three. So we have been given 40 degrees. We've been given 62 degrees, and we're going to add them together. So zero plus two, four plus six, so that gives us 102 degrees. It's still a triangle, so we're working with 180. We know we've got 102. We take them away. Ever is left over is going to be our answer. As usual, we're going to have to borrow one to get some numbers to use at the start. So 10 take away 2, 7 take away 0, and 1 take away 1. So our answer is equal to 78 degrees. Question four, we have 93 degrees, we have 35 degrees, we need to add these together, so 3 plus 5 and 9 plus 3 will give us 128 degrees. We know that triangles add up to 180, so we need to take away the 128 we've got so far. We're going to have to borrow as usual, so we're going to have 10 take away 8, 7 take away 2, and 1 take away 1. So our missing angle is going to be equal to 52. Finally, we're going to do question 5. So we have 49 degrees. We have 84 degrees. We have to add them together. Use a column addition. So 9 plus 4 is 13. Carry the 1. 4 plus 8 is 12. And then we carried is 13. So that will give us 133 degrees. We know that triangles are 180. 
we're taking away the 133 degrees. We're going to have to borrow at the start. So that leaves us with 10 take away 3, 7 take away 3, and 1 take away 1. So our angle is equal to 47 degrees. Now you might want to check your answers at the end and check your answers, add on what you found plus the two clues in the question and all three should have up to 180. That's a nice way to check if you've got a calculator with you. And I've done two steps of work. You know, you see I've got very, very even, systematic, the same work, you know, every single time and you need to be doing this in your exams. A lot of students think, oh yeah, triangles are easy, I'll do this in my head and they miss a 10 out because they're doing it in the head and they get the wrong answer. So nice clear working out. Doesn't take too long at all. It's taking roughly one minute per question and you're going to get one or two marks for it. So it's worth taking the time over. Moving on to the hard questions. Now we have less clues. So we have less numbers in our diagrams, but we can see we've got some mathematical kind of uh, notation here. So that's why it's a little bit harder. So when we're looking at question one, we do the same thing. We're going to add together the angles we've been given. So we know we've been given 32 degrees. But what else have I been given? Well, you should see the right angle in the corner. Now, it's not been labelled with a number, but you should know that a right angle is 90 degrees. So we're going to add that 90 degrees onto our 32. So you only know it's 90 by having a good knowledge of mathematical symbols. Now we've got that, it's exactly the same as the medium questions. So 2 plus 0, 3 plus 9. We've got 122 degrees. It's still a triangle, so 180 degrees. Take away the angles we've got so far, the 122. We are going to have to borrow from the 8 to start off. So 10 take away 2, 7 take away 2, and 1 take away 1. Our angle is equal to 58 degrees. Same thing with question two. So write down the angle you've been given, and we've been given 73. But that's it. But we do have some mathematical notation. Now we've got a double arc on the 73, and there's another double arc over at the other side of the triangle. So that means these are both the same size. That's also a 73. So we're going to add together two 73s. And the kind of triangle this is, is an isosceles triangle where you have two angles which are the same size. So 3 plus 3, 7 plus 7, we've got 146 degrees. To find a missing angle, we'll take 180, take away the angles we've got so far, borrow one to start, so 10 take away 6, 7 take away 4, and 1 take away 1. The missing angle is 34 degrees. So this isosceles triangle, it's got two angles which are equal and it's got one angle which is different. Moving on to question three. Now, looks the same as the previous question. So we're going to write down the angles we've been given. We'd be given 38 degrees. And what do we add on to it? Well, we can see a mathematical notation. We've got two angles which are the same size. The problem is, neither of those I've got numbers on. Now, a common mistake here would be for students to write down two 38s. But that 38 does not have that double arc. It doesn't have any mathematical notation on it. That 38 is the third angle in an isosceles triangle that's different. So what do we do? Well, it, again, it's the same method. We're going to write down the angles being given, which is 38. We're going to take away, even though we only have one angle, we're going to take that away from 180 degrees. Let's see what we get. Borrowed to start. So we've got 10 take away 8, 7 take away 3, and 1 take away 0. We've got 142 degrees. Now that number is both of the missing angles. And we know that both of the missing angles are the same size. So all we need to do now is divide that by 2 to get our answer. So 142 divided by 2, so we're sharing the amount we have left evenly between the two missing angles. At 142 divided by 2, well, half of 100 is 50, 
half of 42 is 21, so 50 and 21 is 71 degrees. So if you have two missing angles and they are the same size, you're going to divide by two at the end. Question four works the same way. So write down the angles you've been given. We've been given 58 degrees. Look at your mathematical notation. You've got two angles which are the same size, but neither of those are the 58 degrees. So we've got no more number clues. So we're going to do 180, take away the 58. We have to borrow to start. So 10 take away 8, 7 take away 5, and 1 take away 0, 122 degrees. And that number represents both missing angles. As they're the same size, we can divide them by 2. We can share them equally to find out what one angle is. So half of 22 is 11, half of 100 is 50. So 11 and 50 is 61 degrees. Now, moving on to question five, we have no number clues at all. And at first, this might be a little bit intimidating, but these questions are normally a lot easier because there's only a couple of ways you can show diagrams with no numbers and still get numerical answers. The first thing to notice is that we have got a 90 degree angle in the corner. So we know that we've got 90 degrees. So let's write that down. The second thing to notice is that we have got two angles which are the same size. And neither of those are a 90 degree angle. So we're now going to proceed like we did with um, equal, um, isosceles triangles, because this is an isosceles triangle. It's also a right angle triangle, but it's isosceles as well. So we've got 180 degrees. We've got 90 degrees, let's take that away. So we have zero take away zero. We have eight take away nine, so we need to borrow one. So 18 take away nine is nine, and zero take away zero is zero. So the two missing angles together form 90 degrees. So now it's gonna be the same method. If we share them equally, if we divide by two, then we're going to get what one of the missing angles is. And 90 divided by 2, half 90, is 45 degrees. And this is the only way you can have a right angle triangle with our numbers on it and get num numerical answers by having a right angle and having two 45 degree angles. Ouch! This is why in some videos I have unexplained scratches. <laughs>